to Alaska Wamas channel and today we're going to be smoking a couple of briskets. We've got on this side we have a Costco Prime brisket. Now what's funny is I've heard that Costco Prime briskets are kind of hit and miss but you know when we do the fold test <clears throat> we can see this one folds really well I and mean, it almost folds in half and so that's supposed to be a really fine brisket. But over here, <clears throat> we have ourselves a choice brisket that I picked up at Three Bears, Alaska. And um, you'll, I'll show you here in a second, but the grain, you know, as you're looking through the plastic, the grain is actually more notable. There's more fat on this choice brisket than there is on this prime. So we're kind of cooking them both just to check it out. But look at this. Look at this. You can, that's just, that's crazy. This one is 10.785 pounds. The prime is 17.34 pounds. So we're in for a long haul cook today. Probably gonna be dark by the time we finish. Um, but we're gonna try and record the whole thing and hopefully you uh, join us on the journey. All right, here we go. So we're gonna cut into this brisket. Oops, maybe if we can get Find a place to get in. There we go. Gonna stick our knife up in here. Little tug to the top. And we got ourselves some cut. Gadzooks. There we go. Look at ooh, we got blood on the counter. A little bit of nastiness back here we got to cut off. Looks like the dogs get to eat too. All right, so there's that one. And you can see here, can you get this, Dave? Mm -hmm. You can see here, these grains, I mean, they're nice and separated, but there is not a lot of fat in between these grains. You know, that's not what I would think of with a prime, though the truth is I've never done a prime brisket before. So this is my first time. I've always done choice and selects. Most, probably most uh, select, when I first started doing this was, gosh, I got my first smoker in 2014, I believe. Maybe 2013, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, I was in Orange, California, and I went to Walmart and I saw the Oklahoma Joe's Longhorn on sale. Oh, well, actually, I don't know that it was actually on sale. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. So you can see the the fat striation between the meat, the, the grains of the meat here. So that's pretty sweet. We're going to see. We're going to see. But anyway, back to my, my long story. I'll make my short story as long as possible. And um, I bought this smoker. I went to Walmart. I saw it at Walmart. And it was like $500 is what the Longhorn was going for. And when I say the Longhorn, I'm talking about the big brother to the Highland, which is what I have outside. Not the Longhorn today where you see half of it is a smoker, half of it's a propane grill. Not that crap. A real smoker. Anyway, so it, so what we're going to do here, we're going to cut off some of this fat cap. Not fat cap, but some of this hard fat that does not render. Dogs love to eat this, too. They just thank me every time. I, I probably shouldn't. You should never cut towards yourself, guys. I'm uh, being a fool. But let's see what we got here. See what we got. As I cut towards myself again, because um, I'm what they call a glutton for punishment, people. Cut off a little bit more of that. Now you might have noticed that what I am using is a big ass chef knife and not a filleting knife or a steak, uh, you know, boning knife. But the reason is. Because I don't have either of those knives. 
what I have is this big ass twin Hankles eight inch chef knife and I love it so it does everything I need it to and eventually I'll get a nicer knife for doing this but right now who cares anyway so I I got this smoker I went into Walmart it was there for, it was for sale 500 bucks what they were selling it for and it started and I pointed it out to my wife and one of the sales guys or one of the one of the um, people in that department they don't have sales guys at Walmart but one of the people in that department I have a feeling was the manager but says hey if you want it I'll, I'll give you that one for 300 bucks and I said really he goes yeah we can do that I said you just sold yourself a smoker buddy and I hadn't realized at the time what I bought. I had never heard of Oklahoma Joe's. I just noticed the thickness of the steel and how nice it was. And, you know, somebody, some of you guys are probably going, why the fuck is he butcher? I'm sorry. <laughs> some of you guys are probably going, why is this guy cutting like that? Golly. Well, why not? I don't care. So let's go to this Christie. Let me show you something. See this here? That's like freezer burnt. We're going to cut that off. We got a little bit of it over here. This definitely has a lot more fat on the top of it. I'm having to trim less on that. I am going to trim a little bit off the back. This one's getting blood everywhere. Eventually, um, I'm going to have to get rid of the bag. But uh, there we go. So, Walmart says to me, hey, I'll give, this, I'll give you this for... Four hundred or three hundred dollars, actually two ninety nine. I said, you know, you sold yourself a smoker, pal. So I I took it home. Like I said, I didn't know what it was that I bought. I just knew that it was an offset smoker, and I knew noticed that the steel was much better than one of these charcoal charbroils. And um, and I had always wanted how do I cut this? I had always wanted a charbroil. You know, again, I didn't know anything about smoking. And I thought they were really cool. I wanted to try offset smoking. Knew nothing about it. Eventually what happened was I got myself... Oh yeah. I got myself that smoker. And I just started smoking brisket after brisket. And then I tried tri-tips. And I tried chuck roasts. Tried a bunch of things. And... Uh, Found that I really enjoyed doing it. And the other thing I discovered is, you know, my wife is a Mexican. She comes from Mexico. And so, like many other Mexicans, we have a tradition at Christmas or Christmas time, you know, that, that time of year, we... um. We do tamales. And what happens is because tamales take so much time to do, it's a lot of preparation, it's a lot of cook time, it's just a lot going on when you're cooking a tamale, when you're cooking tamales. When it's one guy's, it's not a tamale, it's a tamal. But whatever. And uh, we found that it's very much the same with these briskets. You know, what... When we, when we cook them, it takes a long time to cook. And because it takes so long, we don't do it that often. We do it a few times a year. Actually, more than we do, more than we cook the mugs. But uh, anyhow, what ends up happening, like the tamales, is we tend to want to eat them for a few days. And since we're a family of six, a brisket this size... Even though this is big and it looks big, when you have a family of six, it does not go very far. It only goes through maybe two meals. And, you know, we want to have it that day. We want to have some the next day. Then we want to have some for lunches at work. So ultimately what ends up happening is... We end up not having enough. So this time I decided to do two briskets. I've never done two briskets before. So this is going to be interesting. 
and we'll see what happens. I've never cooked two briskets at the same time either. Now I have had my Longhorn loaded up with tri-tips and, and chicken legs and everything else, you know, to the point that it was, the entire grate was full and that was a lot of fun. But I've never done that with briskets. And more importantly, I've never done that with the Oklahoma Joe's Highland. This is a little bit hacked up, but that's all right, it'll eat the same. So what I do is, um, first of all, I make my own rubs, right? And here is the rub I made for this. And what I use, I'm not gonna give, go through the ingredients because the truth is, I have no idea how much of what I'm putting in. I put a lot of sugar. Uh, the sugar I use is called Zulca or Sulca. It's a Mexican sugar. It's, a, it's called a Mexican brown sugar, but um, that's what we use. It looks a lot like raw sugar. Then I'll use a bunch of salt, a little bit of black pepper, or some, you know, and it's not the coarse ground, so most people would, would uh, crucify me, but it's all right. Garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, paprika, regular chili powder, like the crushed red peppers that are ground up. Then I put in cayenne, and then my secret ingredient is chile de arbol. It's a special smoky chile that's a Mexican chili, and, and it really gives it a... Uh, a smoky flavor but it also what I like about that particular chili is that when you first take it it's not that hot and but as you continue to eat it accumulates and it gets hotter on the back end the longer it sits the hotter it gets and so that really allows you when you're eating this you taste those sugars up front and then the heat follows it I love the stuff but anyway what I do this my rub is based on a Memphis rub and then I've basically uh, adjusted it from there. But I will take and I will slather it with mustard. And as you can see, this brisket sitting over here has not been trimmed. It's still the way it was because I'm gonna put this one on first, come back and prep that. But I'm probably not gonna film that. I'll just film me putting it on. But anyway, I get this all over so that and a lot of people, I understand, don't like to put rub on the fat cap side. But I do. I do, because I still eat it. And I trim it so there's enough fat left, but the fat's chewy and delicious. And we all love fat here. You know, if you can't tell from my belly. Anyway, so let's go ahead and fast forward through the rest of this as well as you watch me completely soak my brisket in rub. Today is September 6th, I believe, and you can see that the leaves are already starting to turn, so fall is upon us in Alaska. And the reason I mention this is because I normally like to use chunk wood, and I'll go buy it at the store, but the uh, barbecuing season is kind of over up here, and so therefore, it's really hard to find anything. I was lucky I found these Kingsford pecans, and you know, these do all right. There's enough wood in them that you get decent enough smoke. But um, ended up getting three bags of these. And so now, let's take a look at the smoker. We've got uh, a new smoker, it's the, the Highland. And what I've done to it, as far as modifications, is I have 
went ahead and bought the uh, the sealing tape. I did leave a little bit open right here, and that's so that I can get my my uh, wires in for the digital thermometer that I have not bought yet. And this is this has a little gap in it just because I screwed up. So, but I did get a little three inch. Uh, vent tube. I've never done this before, so we're gonna see how that works. Our firebox, what I did over here was I always put, I don't put the rack in, you know, facing the long way because it doesn't give you enough air underneath your charcoal. So what I do is I put one this direction and then I put one the opposite direction on top of it and that gives you enough um, coverage that you get most of that firebox until I can get myself a an actual firebox or a charcoal box um, but it gives you just enough that you get a lot of air in there and you get a lot more surface so what we're gonna do is go ahead and light up our chimney and get smoking I wanted to talk a little bit about my Oklahoma Joe's Highland smoker now this smoker I did something to it that I didn't do with my Longhorn, and that is I went through and I put, you know, I bought the Oklahoma Joe's uh, uh, heat tape, you know, the, or the, uh, you know, the seal, the gasket seal and all that, and I sealed the shit out of this thing. I sealed the box at the seam. I sealed it where it connected to the thing. I sealed the, the lid as it, uh, you know, over the firebox. I also sealed the lid to the smoker itself. And I want to show you something, because I don't know what it is I'm doing wrong, but this does not look right. So, take a look at this. After sealing this, you know, with all the tape and all that, look at this. Look at how much I'm leaking. You know, even out of the firebox, you know. And I get in here, and I, I hold it down, and that helps quite a bit. So, I'm thinking I could, I mean, I wouldn't do it on the firebox necessarily, but I... Um, at least, you know, on this, look at this, isn't that insane? My longhorn never leaked like that, even before I sealed it. And, uh, I mean, I just think that's insane. So let me hold it down. And now you can see, you know, it's not leaking as much, it's still leaking a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I shouldn't have such dirty smoke but I just threw some more coals on it and they're trying to catch. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Ugh, I don't want that smoke on my meat. I'm thinking about just opening up the box till they catch fire. And problem is we've got a lot of meat in there. And so here, let's, let's let some of this smoke out. Oof, way too much, way too much. Look at that. You know, Yikes, I got a, it's a pretty brisket anyway. So that's just what I wanted to show you with this dumb uh, seal that I put around this box. And you know, over here, the issue is that, like I said, I just threw some new briquettes in there. Pecan Kingsford. And uh, man, it is smoking the shit out of them as they try to catch. I don't know what to do. Guys, I wanted to mention one more thing before I actually go, and that's um, this Oklahoma Joe's Highland that I bought. This is the first time I smoked on it, you know, so I don't know this smoker at all. Um, so far, just meeting him, I'm not liking him, but, you know, who knows, maybe I can do something to, to make it better. So if you guys got any comments, you have any suggestions, I mean, leave them in the comments because I really... Really want to know what I'm doing wrong here, because this is this is ridiculous. It looks like a freaking train going down the highway, well, down the tracks, I guess. So we're back, as you can see, looking uh, at the weather. The weather's changed on us a bit, and it's getting. We're seven hours into the cook, um, and I want to show you something here. One of the issues that I'm having is if you look at these, and this is what I, I had the same problem. I had the same problem with my other Longhorn. If you notice here, I've got what shows as almost 400 degrees on this dial. 
and you you can see that I'm I'm dropping more than 50 degrees, almost 70 degrees, from one side of my smoker to the other. But when you open it up and look at those, oh my goodness! When you open it up, you can see that we're actually 325 right there, 320. This is right about 300. Um, that's what I like to smoke at, and the fact those you can see here, those are looking pretty sweet. They're um, set, like I said, seven hours in. Haven't checked the temperature on them yet, but uh, just wanted to give you an update, show you the little bit of the sky. Look at this; it's getting a little ugly. Little ugly. It has been windy, as you can see from the trees. All right, guys, here we are, seven and a half hours in. And we are, uh, we're looking down here in Oklahoma Joe's, my friends. Let's take a look, shall we? Get my fat titty out of the way. Woo, doggy! Look at that. All right, let's see what we, let's see what we're looking at here. As far as being right there in the... There's 68. Mm, dropping 167 Let's See if we can get a shadow over that There we go 166 so we we got a little ways to go on that one. Oh That one is not good at all. That was rough That's our choice too All right, guys, we're back. It is about nine hours into the smoke. Want to take a look? Let's take a look here. Um, things are good. Things are good. We are uh, temping out at about 185, roughly, is what I got last time. And I know a lot of people say you want to go to 220. I've often just kind of left it at 185, 190, maybe 195 is when I tend to pull it off and I just let it sit for a good while and it brings itself up to temp. I like it a little bit pink, little bit pink on the inside, and so let's take a look at it. There we are, look at that. And cooking here, 275, 280 on that side. We're just, well, we're right about 275 on this side. This is looking sweet. It's looking really good. I mean, we got, ow. This is our choice. This one back here is our prime, and Note how we have lost so much more size on the prime than we did the choice. It'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm tempted to let it just sit a little bit longer. Let it go. I think I'm going to. We're going to go probably another half hour. Pull it off. I think we're going to let it sit a little bit longer. We'll pull it off maybe in a half hour. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to heat up the sweet beans. I'm going to make some rice aroni beef flavor, of course, because we're having beef, right? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, as you, you might see here, the wind has picked up quite a bit. As, as you can see here, wind is, well, maybe you can see. There you go. You can see here, wind has picked up quite a bit and uh, got some trees moving. We've had a little bit of sprinkles, but thankfully it has not rained yet. So hopefully it will not rain. Look out there. If you look closely, you might see a moose. I don't see one. You might see one. You know, if you have good eyes and x-ray vision, there's a moose out there somewhere. Anyway, let's get going with this smoke. In a uh, half hour, we'll come back and pull it off. guys we're back and as you can see we have two beautiful briskets here this is our prime this is our choice and uh, grain is going this way actually on the flat it's going over this way so we're gonna go ahead and pull that off cut it gets the grain a bit and uh, take a look at how it tastes and then we're gonna taste out ooh, look at that juice is just falling off wow so the grain is going it looks to be going like this 
So we're gonna go ahead and cut a little bit here. Oh my gosh. So let's see, I have never been a proponent of uh, squeezing my meat. Come on over here, Diff, so we can get in the light. Come around. But as you can see, we are we are dripping off of this thing. Look at this. A little bit dry over here. Definitely dry. Not uh, not sure what to think about that. Let's taste this. Mm. Tastes really good though. Man, the bark is amazing. Mmm, very good. Let's see if we put it back. Mm. Let's see what the choice is like. And I can tell you, lifting it, this brisket is tough. It's like, it's very stiff. Let's cut that tip off. See what we have here. Mm. You know, I mean, you look at it, you've got a good smoke ring. It's it's fairly juicy. It's juicy enough. Let's see what the pull test is. Pull test, this is really tough. You, you definitely have to cut this one. Mmm. But it chews really well. Surprisingly. I think that's the silver skin. And that's why. Which is unfortunate. Because that's where all that flavor went. Nice beef flavor, but um, this one over here, I think is a clear winner, the Costco Prime. Both are delicious. Ooh, the heat on the back end is starting to kick in. Delicious. The rub's fantastic. You see it's nice and cooked through. I'm looking forward to getting into that, uh, that point. See what we got going on there. All right. Mm. So, you know, after a couple of tastes, um, I hate to say it, man, but the choice brisket is still, it's a little bit tougher. But once you chew it, it's not horrible. I mean, it's not, it's actually not bad at all. The prime is very soft, very delicious. Um, the rub's fantastic. I wish I'd kind of stuck with my instinct to pull it off at eight uh, at 180. I let it cook a little more. It, it's a little bit overcooked for me, but it tastes fantastic. So take that for what it's worth. The kids love it. The uh, dogs, I threw a piece to them. They seem to love it, but of course they also seem to love raw fat. So, uh, ooh. It's gotten really windy outside. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Click like, and uh, we'll try to get another video up soon.